the other side of my face. Oh, my? Okay. The last few weeks there was a lot of press. I just want to try to help the team. Firstly, Kevin, thank you very much for joining us. I want to take you back and, and talk to you about your career and just really find out what makes you that unique player. Um, firstly, great hair, by the way. I'm feeling it. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but if you can take us back to the very start, where did your love of football kind of begin? To be honest, when my parents always speak about it, when I was like a couple of weeks old, I had the ball in my hand and I don't know, I just always played and I think I started playing when I was four years old. You're not even allowed to play with a team until six, I think. But I played futsal, I played on the streets, so it was just constant for me. At what age did you kind of feel that I'm maybe a little bit different to the other kids in terms of ability? I, I, I never really looked at it that way. Obviously, I made decision through my my life to play football, but I just enjoyed it and I always tried to thought what was the right option for me, you know, and the way that I played football. And I don't know, once I became to to start training with the first team a couple of times, you're like, I've got a shot here. And then it just went so quick. In a couple of months, I was like full, full first time play. And then just kind of a fire to, you know, be competitive. And A lot of young people in their lives at some point have to move away. You were very young. But what were the kind of sacrifices that really stick out in your mind that you had to make at those stages in your life? Uh, I would say I lost everything social. I moved when I was 14. That's the time you start meeting your friends outside a little bit and having some fun. I guess at that time it wasn't really done that much. I think it's becoming more, more and more common now. You know, I was far away, so um, I left everything behind at home. But looking back at it, I knew I lost all my social stuff and probably lost also some social skills in my beginning years. I was okay with it at the time. I was happy. It was my decision and then it's fine for me. Has that shaped you in the later parts of your life as well? Those early beginnings of being disciplined and... Uh, probably, because uh, in a way I had to take care of myself. Um, obviously you live at a, at a school or foster parents, but in a, in, a, in, in a way you sometimes live by yourself. You have to make sure that everything you know, if you forget your stuff at the 14 years old, what happens a lot? It's you. It's me. Yeah. And I had to deal with it. And, you know, after a while, you, you dealt with it. And it's a normal thing for me. But obviously, when you live at home, you know, mom and dad take care of you. And I don't know, it helped me moving forward, I guess, and moving to different countries and deal with it quite quickly. Mm. You moved to Chelsea. How do you look back at your time at Chelsea? I signed for Chelsea knowing that I would be loaned out the first year, and if I do really well, we'll see what happens. I did a pre-season, went to Werder Bremen, had a really good year. And then in the summer, it was a little bit of a tussle up. I could have went Dortmund, you know, with Klopp at the time, or, or stay, and Jose wanted me to stay. It just didn't work out. I was maybe a little bit impatient at the time also, but I just wanted to play football. Was you looking at Chelsea's team and going, I should be in there, I should be playing at that point? I had the confidence. I know. I, I know. There's a lot of good players there, and there were, there were. Yeah, it was a top team. I understand how it also works for the young guys in every club. Uh, when you get loaned out, come back, loaned out, come back, and I didn't want that situation anymore. Mm. So I just pushed a little bit to get sold, and that will happen. You leave Chelsea and you go to Germany. How do you walk into a new club off the back of maybe not so positive moments? There was quite a lot of pressure. I think it was like the highest signing for them. 
I knew the sporting director because he took me to Bremen the year before and he switched. So, uh, and they had quite high, high ambitions at the time to play in Europe and try and compete. So I knew that I had to be, be good, but I never had like doubt in my mind that my ability would be there. I just needed some time to adapt to that team and then I was sure it would be okay. So then obviously you move to Manchester City, huge transfer fee, and then you get people in the media even saying, oh, how can they spend so much money on a young kid who hasn't done well in the Premier League already, had one good season in Germany, etc. But the talent was undeniable. Was that big pressure for you? Did you feel that pressure of a big price tag? You know, I know, I know what people were saying, but I also felt after that period where Chelsea where I basically didn't play, so people didn't really see me. They've not really seen me play in Germany and not seen how how well I actually did for Wolfsburg to be second, win the cup that never happened in their history, and then win the Super Cup against Bayern, who was like on the pep, and they win everything anyway, and we we did really really well. I took a lot of steps in a year and a half. I know it's quick and it's a lot of money, but yeah, I took it on the chin and went forward with it. There's De Bruyne, oh, oh. a coruscating rocket of a shot. What are you like when you finish a game? Are you, are you someone who's like football 24-7 to get home? Um, or are you... I would say it's less now. Uh, I would say it was way more when I was younger. Uh, if kids you, change, if, don't they? Yeah, kids change a lot. And I would say I would be more upset or um, moody or angry if, if I play a bad game or something bad happened. In the, but now you come home, you see them, it's, it's different. And I understand the situation. and. I also understand more than if you can lose against good teams and everybody is a good player, so I just take it how it, how it comes. So I, I couldn't sit here and do this interview without talking to you about assists because you are that guy. Do you have any idea where you are in like the Premier League all-time list of assists? Uh, it's, it's came up the last few weeks that I, I think I went number f number three. Yeah, um, just behind Rooney and Ryan Giggs. Yeah, so that's it, it's pretty high, isn't it? But I don't know. I just try and create as much as possible and just get my, my I would say my teammates in in a position that they can excel in, you know? And if I have a good winger, I try to put him one-on-one. On one. If I have a, a striker like Erling, I try to create him five, six chances a game because I know he can make a difference for us. That's my job. That's why I'm good at, at creating these chances and, and seeing these things. And I think in football, everybody has his job and this is mine. And it is just something that I, that I worked hard on. and try to understand and I don't, I don't make too much of it obviously it's good to have because the more I have the better my team will do and you know and try to win. Do, do you have a preference like assist or goals? Well I would I always say that assist is just the way that I am. I like scoring goals but I would say just try to create as much as possible and you know it's it's been part of my game more than I would say scoring goals, but I like to chip in if possible. Do you, do you have a favourite? I would say the one for Ilkay against uh, Villa at home, 3-2. Yeah, the game was, was nuts. De Bruyne back post! It's the title winner! Absolutely extraordinary! Listen, we, we can't talk to you without talking about last season's historic, the way it ended for you guys, you winning the treble. Was you ever there sitting there going, you know, this might not just happen for me? I felt like that in my career at some points before I actually won it. Yeah, I, I still feel it in, in a kind of way. Obviously, you won it, but in a kind of way, it's still a little bit annoying that I get injured in two finals. Mm -hmm. I played two finals and does I that get... Still, does that get... You know, you um, it doesn't get to me because I understand the situation last year, what I've done. I was managing a hamstring injury for two months, so I understand that, but it's still... I did what I needed to do. I helped my team to the job and they finished this off. But it's still an, an annoying part where I say, like, I would love and, you know, just manage through, through a fire. There's nothing I can do. I, I have a rupture of 10 centimeters in my hamstring. There's no chance to, to play. So, um, you know, it's, it, it is still annoying, but, you know, I'm, I'm really proud of, of, of what we have done. What was your summer like, by the way, just out of interest? Was it, was it well, I saw Jack Grealish this summer. No, I enjoy myself. Oh, t to be honest, um, I try to enjoy m more during the year now. I would say after I won the first couple of Premier Leagues, you understand that um, if you don't enjoy that period during the year, 
Uh, it goes really quick in the summer because like obviously we had the Champions League final and then we came back, had a parade the day after and then uh, everybody goes, national team or whatever and then the day after the parade in the morning I'm bringing my kids back to school and I was talking to my wife and we were like, it's strange, it's already over, you know, we work 11 months, win all these titles and then after two days it's like nothing happened, it's like back, back to next year. What motivates you and your team? when you start a new season straight after such a successful season? It's hard to say. I would say the team has always been the same. It's been really nice guys. I think humble enough to try and go again. It doesn't mean that we're going to win this year, but I think this team has showed signs that they want to compete again. And I think that's the most important. If you still are willing to compete, you, you, you got a chance even after winning everything this year and having the humility to, to work hard for that. Uh, I was at St James's the other day when you came back from the, your long life of an injury and your impact was huge. De Bruyne looking to shoot, oh he scored! Have you ever felt any more valuable than you do to your team now at any point in your career? I would say to my team I don't feel any difference than I had before. Maybe when you knew it's a little bit, but I would say that changed it real quickly when I came, but I don't feel different as a person. Maybe my team looks at me a little bit more now because I'm one of the senior guys, I've been here so long mm. uh, and in difficult moments, but I think I would say I, I'm rather chill guy until I go on the pitch and I can be really competitive and maybe sometimes annoying, but you know, for the rest, I would say I'm pretty much the same. You're, you're 32 now, and in today's game, that's not even like old in my years, that's like 32, right, start preparing for the next stage in your life. Are you even thinking about that type of stuff now, or um, are you fully focused on football still? I'm fully focused on football. Um, I'm not really thought about what happens after. Obviously, you think about situations. Um, you speak to your wife, to your family. Um, but I've got 18 months left on my contract, I'm happy. I've not spoken to anybody, so it's, it's easy for me to focus on football. And, you know, as long as I feel good and feel happy, then there's nothing really to think about. Lastly, before you go, how would you, Kevin De Bruyne like to be remembered once you finally hang up your boots? To be fair, I hope that people enjoy the way that I play football. I think I play football the way that I live my life, straightforward, to the point. <laughs> um, no, and obviously I'm not a dribble or something. I, I think people can enjoy my football from a different view than other people. And I think I'm a quite positive player in, in the way that I play. And, you know, if you like me, you like me. If you don't, you don't. I'm, I'm OK with that. But I, I think I, I brought some joy to some people in the world. So and maybe I can be an example for that. But, you know, I can't really um, change people's opinions. And I'm, I'm, I'm OK with that also. All right, listen, Kevin, thank you very much. Thank you. Worth the wait, man. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.